So we're going to continue our class this morning on lighting your lamp, figuring out how we talk to people about where they're at in their walk or not yet walk with the Lord. Your memory verse, we have one job. So this morning, we're going to begin what is probably going to be a few weeks long discussion because I've consolidated a couple of topics under one umbrella uh, because I needed an S at the time. Now, you've since given me a few S's, uh, but that's okay. We'll keep this under its umbrella topic and we'll break it down. So when we mean structures, uh, what we're really talking about is the questions that I was given to discuss uh, across government, economics, and the church. Big items. So specifically this morning, we'll talk about government. It's kind of weird. You never actually think about that. That's normally a civics or a science class, right? Uh, so specifically, the question we were asked was, does God bless America? Any opening comments? Anyone want to take a shot at it? All right, so Gene has already progressed all the way to the end of the lesson. <laughs> but we'll get there. Right? Uh, and in fact, we've discussed this topic uh, a couple of times in, in the 10 to 12, 15 years I've been here. Uh, but it comes back around, and that's okay. Uh, because every time we discuss it, we get a little deeper in our knowledge and understanding. However, it's something that we say, right? But if I'm in New Zealand, or if I'm in England, I say those things. And they're the same, right? I kind of like God defend New Zealand. That's hilarious, right? I mean, if God is defending us, we're done. We can just pack it in and go home. I have no worries. And, and in New Zealand, that's probably about how they feel. When was the last time you heard of anyone invading New Zealand? Other than the people who currently live there. <laughs> so, and then, of course, God save the Queen, if, if you're in England. So how does all that work? Let me ask you. Let me ask you that. Are they statements or are they pleas? If it's a statement, then you and I probably have issue to discuss. If it's a plea and we're requesting a blessing from the Lord, then by all means, get after it. You're free to pray for whatever you want. I have issue with it if you think it's a statement because statements are, or in this case, it would be a demand on the Lord. And you want to be careful with that. Also, because as Gene said earlier, and we'll find out through the course of our discussion, God's fairly ambivalent about big structures like government. He used to care about one in particular, and we'll talk about that. But we live under a new covenant. So, so we'll start out with, why does God bless Israel? Right. If you if you if you got a scantron and you're waiting for the questions, just come sit near Gene. <laughs> he's got he's got the answers to the quiz. So this is Genesis 12 verses two and three, uh, in which God specifically he's talking to Abram, and he's specifically telling him what it's going to be, and how it's going to work. Uh, when he tells him, I'm going to make you the nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And anyone that curses you, I will curse. And in you, all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. All of the roles and functions of Israel are stated there. Why does he bless Israel? That through them he might bless all mankind. Other than that, what's the purpose of Israel? God didn't want a country to play with. He has the world. 
He needed to come around, or, or he needed to get us to a place where we could come around and face him. And that's what Israel does. It functions as a tool to introduce the world to God that they might know he is God so that when he brings forth his son, they might know he is the son of God. And when he completes his work, you can have confidence in that. And let that be your foundation. Any issues with, with that's why God blesses Israel? And he carries them through all of their times. So, aside from Israel, has God ever blessed any other nation? Again, bring your, bring your scantron over to Gene so he can fill it out for you. Did everyone hear the answer? At times, in various times, for various reasons, the Lord blesses other countries. Uh, we could talk about some of the most uh, pronounced ones. So first, why? Hmm? You can't raise your hand, Gene. You got to know. Okay, I like that answer. If you didn't hear it, he said, to do the Lord's will. Because he loves all of us equally. He's going to bless every nation in, in, in sequence. I like where you're at. I don't know if it's correct, though, but I love where you're at. Because he gets around to all of us eventually. Yes, ma'am. Because he's merciful? Yeah. Mercy is a blessing. So, I'm glad you brought blessing up. Is Joseph a blessing upon Egypt? When he is over Egypt, I think so. Because God needs a place to shelter Israel, he blesses Egypt. That's why. He didn't bless them with the knowledge and understanding of what the future was going to be for them uh, through Joseph because he wanted England uh, or Egypt to prosper. He needs a place to shelter Egypt. Or correction, uh, getting all the countries mixed up. He needs a place to shelter Israel so they can grow. And why not under the strongest power in the world at the time? And so he gives mercy to Egypt, and they don't believe in him. In fact, you know, they, they believe in the opposite. They've got a pantheon of gods. They, <laughs> they did. You're absolutely right. Yeah. A little bit of trial and tribulation to trial and error in there, but ultimately, yes. So how about this? Now we're going to transition forward in time, and, and Israel is not yet a kingdom, but we're in the promised land. What about all those little tribes around them that, that sometimes just roll over Israel? Is there strengthening? And that's the way the Lord says it. I will strengthen the Amalek. Uh, uh, I will strengthen the Hittites, I will strengthen the Jebusites, uh, and I will reinforce them, and they will punish Israel. Yeah. Yeah. He blesses them with relief from whatever else is going on in their life and strengthens them so they can go to war with, with, with Israel. So how about Nebuchadnezzar uh, uh, and, and Cyrus? <clears throat> so we're a little farther along now. Uh, we're, we're through the kingdoms. We're into the captivity. And, and again, these are people who don't believe and the verse there says, now I will, give you, I will give all your countries into the hands of my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I will make even the wild animals subject to him. And, and that's just one verse out of a long diatribe from the Lord. There are not many men the Lord calls my servant. David? Solomon? Samuel? 
a small group of people. And he throws Nebuchadnezzar in there. And Nebuchadnezzar doesn't believe in him. <laughs> That's right, for three years. He, uh, <clears throat> he comes to the realization that the Lord is real uh, through, through his own actions. But he uses them. And they roll over Israel like a storm. And they, and they carry the people into captivity. But here's a bigger one. Now you'll have to, you'll have to get your Bibles out uh, to read that. It's Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 13. And this is about Cyrus of Persia. And, and the Lord says things about Cyrus uh, that he says about few others when he talks about bringing him alongside and using him as a world power and what he is going to give him in order to allow him to accomplish this. And in fact, in that whole sentence, he says, you don't believe in me. Despite your disbelief, I will do these things for you that you may do my work and bring Israel home. And in Scripture, that's the only reason Cyrus is successful. And he rolls over the earth. And essentially takes all of it that we understand at the time under his control. And then he does something unusual in the time. And he starts sending the tribe home. He says, go. Go home to your God. He only really asks them to do one thing. Pray for me. Yes. Prophecy is hard to see when it's in your windshield. And it's, it's even still a little difficult to understand when it's in your rearview mirror. Yeah. I agree. Gene said that's his problem today. <laughs> it is a problem that we have, that we, we, we don't understand the future because we, we don't get the scripture right in God's understanding of it. So all of that to say that if, if you're not Israel and God blesses you as a nation, it's because you're a tool. He is going to use you to train Israel. That is the entirety of the Old Testament. If he blesses your country ever at all for any purpose, it is to serve the training of Israel. And when that work is complete and we transition into the New Testament, what happens? We'll talk about that. We're going we're to circle back around to that. So what is Israel as God's nation? They're a theocracy, right? We invented the term just to define what it is. So it's a theocracy because even though the Lord is king, he controls power of both religion and state. That's what makes it a theocracy. Doesn't, doesn't matter who you've got at the top of the food chain, if they control the reins of church and state simultaneously, you have a theocracy. Are you a theocracy? Is your country a theocracy? Are we? I thought we were a democracy. So we don't fit the mold of any country that the Lord has set up. The only country the Lord has ever set up. We run our, we run our house a little different. But there's the kingdom that comes after. God's not a fan. He doesn't do it willingly. He doesn't create the idea of the kingdom. That's a man-made idea. That the children of Israel rant and rail at Samuel 4. Uh, because they, they no longer want to be led by him and his sons. Now, there's some human flaw and, and character issues in there between his sons. Uh, 
that act as a catalyst for the decision. But instead of asking the Lord for better spiritual leaders, they asked for a king. Dean asks the room collectively, why? Hold on. It is a rejection of God. And what were you saying, Dwayne? Yeah. We love, we love men on pedestals as a people. Yes, ma'am. That was their stated purpose. We want to be like everyone around us. Even though you have separated us unto you. And he's very specific about that. That's a verbatim quote. We want to be like everyone else. I didn't hear that one. <laughs> All the cool kids have a kingdom. So, so Israel needs a kingdom. I like that point. Did you get, did you get that over there? What Gene said? He said the reason he asked the why is to make the point that the, one of the purposes of Israel was to prove to people that God existed and that he was God and, and to be that example of and why. And instead, they turned right around and said, we want to be like everyone else. Full opposite of his stated purpose and intent. And so the Lord acquiesces. He allows it. He never approves it. He blesses the two people who he chooses as kings, continues that blessing through Solomon, and then the whole thing falls apart. And Solomon, you know, the Lord's making good on a commitment after Solomon disobeyed him. He tells David, I won't take it away from your son, but after him, that line is broken. And he breaks it. So any other type of government you can think of existed long before some modern guy wrote about it. There have been communes in the world since there have been people. There have been little pockets of democracy ever since three people got together and decided they were going to have mutual decision-making authority. There have been kingdoms. And there have been any other form of government you can think of. We didn't invent them when we wrote the rules to codify them in the current age. How about that? I say that now uh, because what is, what is God's purpose and intent and point for us now? What's the new covenant? What is our relationship with God? It's through Christ, right? Individual. Israel's the only nation mentioned in Revelation. Specifically. Because he reserves a remnant for them. Because he, he has never, he's proving to them in, in the scriptures that he has never forgotten them. And in fact, they do still get to come home for some of them, those that believe. No other nation is mentioned by name. Why are you so special that you think you are blessed by God as a nation? That's tough to hear, right? Because we want to be. We like to think we are. We'd like to think that our behavior is appropriate as a nation and that we do things right in the eyes of the Lord. And we may at times. But God's not interested in our nationhood. God's interested in our individual relationship with him. And that's what the new covenant is about. So we have to be very careful with that. This is what the Lord says about government. Post Old Testament into the new. <clears throat> All the apostles and Christ himself when he speaks about it are ambivalent about Rome as a government. 
And, and Rome, of course, has gone through different iterations of how we feel about it in, in the modern age. Uh, we, we, we demonized them, and then we rehabilitated them, and now we're kind of split. It was just a government in the context of our conversation. Big government, but just a government. And so whatever government you live under, because Christians can be anywhere in the world, Christ says live under that. And this is said when the persecutions are ramping up. We're starting to be punished for our faith, and it is visible to anyone who can see forward that it is going to get very painful for Christians. And then Peter says this. It's the last part. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. And we demonstrate that by living under the authority under which you're born. A lot of different countries in the world, Christians are born in every one of them. It's okay. None of them are any more or less important to God. He wants you, as a member of whatever government under which you exist, to be a Christian. He does say that. It's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the whole purpose of this sermon series. Wherever you are, your light should shine. Under any circumstances. And in doing so, people will come to you. And they'll say, why? Especially if you live in a dark place. Why? Because we have one job. It's shine. And in doing so, like a moth to flame, you draw others to your presence. And it gives you the opportunity to tell them why. And the why is supposed to be Jesus Christ. You can do that anywhere. We know people who do that everywhere. If you pay attention to the wall out there where our missionaries are at. And they live under all different forms of government. So I get it. I understand the intent behind God bless America. I think it's a plea. And as a plea, it's perfectly valid. We want to be right. And we'd like to be blessed. Now, I especially like hijacking children's nursery rhymes and making them other than, than what they are and putting them to work for the Lord. So did you hear that over there? Okay. So. Does God bless America? The question remains. All right. And so it's indirect. Gene said only through the people. As individuals, I'm not sure how that works collectively.
So I'm not, I'm not against the terminology. I'm not against the saying, don't take it wrong. Uh, but I think we need to understand where countries reside in Scripture in relation to the Lord. He's looking for you individually. If you happen to live in America, fine. If you happen to live in Brazil, fine. If you happen to live in Croatia, fine. And he can bless them all if he blesses anyone. Even the ones you don't like. It's his choice. So don't reserve the right unto us. I'm, I'm sure that he's out there defending New Zealand as much as humanly possible, given the Christians that are in New Zealand. I'm sure he's out there in London trying to save the Queen and all the people there that believe in him. And I'm sure that he's here in America, looking at all the Christians that are here and blessing them and thereby blessing their nation. So guard yourself. And therefore, guard your country? Question? We'll have to see how that works. You, you can write it down in a notepad and take it to heaven with you. Because everybody thinks we're going to have a quiz time with the Lord. So that'll be one of the questions we'll ask. All right, any other closing comments on the Lord, his relationship to government, and his relationship to us? All right. it was always about that. Adam and Eve weren't a kingdom. They weren't a nation. So next week, we're going to look at economics. And so we'll ask you the question, uh, does God like capitalism? And we'll also ask you if he likes socialism or, or any other form of economic policy uh, that we've created in the world and talk about just how ambivalent God is about the things sometimes that we get emotionally attached to and try to defend. So I'm going to give back some time today. It's 10.01. Normally I take time from you, but I've been counting it all together. It's about 15 minutes, so we'll give that back to you today. And we can all visit. All right, we're complete, and thank you for your time.